I'll just change the time base setting so we've got a bit better. So if we drop here is two light bulbs and those two light bulbs one of which is directly connected up to the power supply which is running on 24 volts it says on here which is a bit scary but no man 24 volts okay that's the way they wanted so 24 volts there I'll go for a bit less just to see so and one of them is connected up directly the other one is connected up through a coil there's the coil it's really just the primary turn of a transformer, but there's a big coil of wire. There's the one that's connected up, and there's the one that's going through the coil. If I press the button for the to switch them on, what do you think is going to happen? So, press the button. There's a small delay there. Okay. So the one going through the coil takes roughly half a second longer to light than the one that's just connected up directly. What could be the possible explanations for the being that delay? And what's this sort of obvious <coughs> if you didn't know that much about electricity? Yeah, exactly. So it's going around all these coils of wire, which must be at least a hundred meters of wire. But that's not the if Electricity is travelling at two-thirds of speed of light, or drift velocity is two-thirds of speed of light. That isn't actually a factor. So there must be something to do with the nature of the coil of wire with this iron core, which means there's that delay. That property of coils, some of you have been doing your investigations on this, should know what that's called for a coil. What can you measure about a coil of wire that tells you how good a coil of wire it is? Same constant. Not a spring constant, no. Inductance. Inductance, yeah. So looking at the inductance of this coil here, and what gives this coil that inductance that means that it, there is this time delay, this lag between the two. With a similar thing, you've got a bulb here which is a neon bulb. These neon bulbs only work if you have at least 90 volts to get the spark across the gas in the neon light. Okay, we've got a neon bulb that's connected in parallel with a coil of wire. When I press the, ball, the, the switch to get current going through the coil, coil, nothing happens. It's when I release, you see a short flash. Mm -hmm. So there's current going through the <coughs> coil at the moment. If I stop the current going through the coil, you get a flash that must be at least 90 volts from the 6 volt supply. Okay. So these things, these effects are really tied in with what's called the inductance or the self-inductance of a coil of wire wrapped around like that. Now before we go on to how it all works, I think it's just worth introducing just a few applications of what self-inductance actually uh, helps with. So right, one of the first applications is that if you've got a coil of wire down here can actually detect metal underneath the ground. So there's a metal detector here from a website that um, anybody know where your nearest metal detector factory is? Yeah, White's Electronics is one of the UK's only metal detector uh, manufacturing sites. It's actually an American company, but it's the Inverness operation is their only UK base, and they're just down the road. And it operates because of a change in inductance where you've got the coin underneath here and that's making a change to the inductance of the coil in the metal detector. Another application is where you've got in the road coils that are built in underneath the road to you'll see them near traffic lights where it looks like a strip of wet tarmac and there's actually a coil of wire underneath there that detects the presence of cars because the inductance of the coil here is changing as the magnetic effect of the car going over the top of the coil changes the inductance. You can induce a current in a coil of wire going around here. Sorry, there's, you can, the, if this is clipped onto a, 
a heavy duty wire where it's carrying a lot of current, you'll get an induced voltage in this instrument here, which is a way of measuring current without actually touching the wire. Because if you're trying to measure the current going through big electricity supply cables, you don't want to get anywhere near the high voltage, whereas this allows you to do it without touching the wire itself, just by the magnetic effect of the current going through. This is what's called a Tesla coil. And I was at Mer on uh, Saturday, they had one of these at Elgin. It was excellent, it really was, because it, it does give you this what's called corona discharge, because you're using just a big coil of wire there to induce a very high voltage on the top of the Tesla coil, much more effective than a Van de Graaff generator. The Faraday type torch that you've been having tremendous fun with, if I can separate it from that there. So you can buy these in most garages where you shake it backwards and forwards, the moving magnet through the coil will charge a small capacitor and then make the light available for about 20 seconds or so. So it's not particularly efficient, but it means you don't have to have batteries. The guy who came up with all this is actually Michael Faraday. The Bank of England have stopped printing these notes, stopped printing them about 2001, but it was, he was obviously well regarded because he went on a 20 pound note as opposed to Isaac Newton who's only on a 5 pound note down in England. So. Um, it's these Faraday's laws of induction that we're coming back to. That was actually Faraday's original coil of wire that he used to determine inductance. Yeah, so that's the actual coil there. And this effect is also used to, in what's called eddy currents. You might have seen an effect where you can get a, a, an aluminium tube, just a, a normal copper or aluminium tube. If you drop a magnet down the tube, then it runs down very, very slowly down the inside the tube of the tube due to eddy currents. These eddy currents are used in a train braking system where the eddy currents from these electromagnets induces a current in the wheels and the wheels actually absorb the energy and heat up without any direct contact between any brake pads and the train wheels, which means that the brakes last a lot longer and there's no difficulty with grime and grit getting into the train brakes. The last one, last application of this is where you've got on an electric guitar, there would be a, a coil of wire underneath each of the guitar strings, and as the guitar strings go backwards and forwards, the self-inductance of the coil changes, and therefore you pick up a, a signal on the, an induced EMF on the electric guitar because of the pickup coils. Okay? So these are all applications of Faraday's law of induction. So